Hello and welcome to Lesson 6. This session is about the warehouse management mobile application. In this session, we're going to review the warehouse management mobile application history, how to install and connect to the app. Then we'll move to the configuration part and we'll review how to manage the field names and the priority groups, how to build the mobile application structure using the mobile device menu and menu items, how to manage and define the warehouse workers, then last but not least, we'll review the work step features like the step instructions, promoted fields, and the details. Let's get started with an overview about the warehouse management application history, how we started and where we ended up today. So the first application was released in 2014 when the warehouse management module is introduced in AX2012 R3. It was called Mobile Device Portal, and it was an HTML solution for the low capability devices. Then in 2017, the first native application was released for the Windows and Android devices, and it was called Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operation Warehousing. And after that, in 2021, a new generation of the application was released, and it's called Warehouse Management Application. This is the release that currently in the market. The new warehouse management application is a complete replacement of the old warehousing app. However, both applications are using the same underlying framework, which makes the migration easy. If needed, the two applications can be used side by side to help the users gradually move to use the new application. Be aware that the old warehousing app is deprecated since April 2021 and will only receive support with bug and security fixes. The feature enhancements will no longer be provided. After April 2022, the old warehousing app will no longer be supported and the customers will be asked to move to the new warehouse management application. And after that, the old warehousing app will be removed from the Microsoft and Google Play stores. Now let's review how to install and connect the warehouse management mobile application. First, and from a high level overview, you should create a web service application in the Azure Active Directory that will be used to manage the communication between the supply chain management environment and the warehouse management mobile application. Then create an active user and define the Azure Active Directory applications in the supply chain management environment. Then get the warehouse management application either from the Google Play Store or the Microsoft Store. Then define the connection settings in each mobile device and after that, you should be able to look into the application. You can follow this step-by-step -step article in docs.microsoft on how to install and connect the warehouse management mobile application. So first, for the system requirements, one of the following operating systems must be installed on the mobile devices. Windows 10 was this build or later for the Windows devices, or Android 4.4 or later for the Android devices. Then in Dynamics SCM, this feature must be enabled. User settings, icons, and step titles for the new warehouse app. This feature is marked as mandatory and enabled by default since application release 10.0.25. You can get the application either from the Google Play Store or Microsoft Store, and when it comes to installing the application in a smaller deployment with few devices, you can just install the application directly from the stores to the mobile devices. But for the large deployment of many devices, you can use a mobile application management solution such as Microsoft Intune to automate the application deployment and configuration. You can also download the application from the Microsoft App Center where you can download the current version, previous versions, and the preview versions with upcoming features that you can try it out before the general available release. If you download a preview version, then a few extra steps are required to install it. Please refer to this link for more information. And now let's review how to create a web service application in the Azure Active Directory that will be used to handle the communication between Dynamics Supply Chain Management and the mobile application. So first navigate to the Azure portal and then click Azure Active Directory and then here under the Manage, click App Registrations. Then here, click New Registration to open the Register and Application Wizard. Then here in the wizard, give it a name like WMA App, and then under the Supported Account Types, select Accounts in this Organizational Directory only. Then click Register. 
right now the application is registered then make a note here of the application or the client id at this value will be used later then under the manage section click certificate and secrets to select the authentication method it's recommended to go with the certificate approach since it's more secured and could be automated if you will go with this approach, then upload the certificate, then make a note of the thumbprint value that is shown after you upload the certificate. This value will be required later when you configure the Windows devices. If you will go with the client secret approach, then click new client secret, then give it a key description and duration, then make a note of the key value. After that, navigate to Dynamics SCM and create a new user for the Warehouse Management Mobile application with the security rule Warehouse Mobile Device User. Then navigate to the Azure Active Directory applications that found under the System Administration, then Setup. Click New and here in the Client ID, paste the Client ID that you just copied earlier while configuring the app registration, then give it a name and here select the user that you just created. Now we are ready to define the connection settings on the mobile device. I'll navigate to the application, then I'll click Setup Connection, and here you can import the connection settings from a file, or you can scan it using QR code. This only works when the authentication method is certificate. You can also define the connection settings manually. I'll go with the manual way, so I'll click here in both manually. First, you should specify whether the authentication method is a client secret or a certificate. If you select client secret, then you should specify here the client secret value. If you specify here certificate, then you should specify the certificate thumbprint. I'll select here client secret and then I'll give it a connection name. You might have here different connection names for different environments. Like for example, you might have something for the production environment and another one for the UET environment and so on. I'll call it the SCM test. And then here in the Azure Active Directory client ID, I'll paste the client ID that we copied in the uh, app registration step. And then here I'll specify the client secret. And then here in the Azure Active Directory resource, this should be the URL of the environment. And then in the Azure Active Directory tenant, this should be in this format. Here, this is the uh, login.windows.net slash the Azure Active Directory domain name. And then here in the company, I'll select the default legal entity and then I'll click save. Now we are ready to log in and use the warehouse management mobile application. Now let's review the required configurations that make the mobile application ready for use. There are configurations that are required for both the old and the new application, like the warehouse app fields, mobile device menu items, mobile device workers or users. There are some other configurations that only required for the new warehouse management application, like the mobile device user settings, mobile device steps, promoted fields, and the details. The warehouse app field names are used to determine how the data will be captured in the mobile device by specifying the preferred input mode of each field. This could be either a manual entry or by scanning a value. You can also assign the input types of each field by specifying one of the following options like alpha, numeric, date, or selection. Now let's review how to define and configure the warehouse app field names. The warehouse app field names found in warehouse management module, setup, mobile device, then warehouse app field names. First time when you create a new legal entity, you can use the option of create default setup to generate all the field names that will be used in the mobile application. After that, you can specify the preferred input mode and the input type for each field. So here, for example, for the item number, we can see the preferred input mode is scanning. However, for something else like the inventory status, it's manual. You can select here between scanning or manual. After that, you can specify the input type of each field between the following options. Numeric for the numeric values, like the quantity and the weight, alpha for the text values, date for the date fields, like the expiration date and so on. Selection for the field that contains a list of options, so you can select between these options, like the inventory status, unit of measure, and so on. Definitely, these values could be override as per the business requirements when it's required. 
The warehouse app field priority is one of the configurations that mainly used with old warehousing app. With this configuration, you can put the fields into different priority groups to decide where is the information that should be displayed on the main task page. So here, for example, I assign the item number to the first group, priority group 10, then the location in the second group, and the quantity and the unit of measure in the third group. This will ensure that while the user is performing a task in the mobile application, these values will be shown in the task page. This makes more sense in the old warehousing app due to the UI design. So here we can see we have a task page and a details page. And here in the task page, we can see the values of the fields of the three priority groups are available here, where the other fields like the location and item descriptions are available in the details page. Now let's review how to configure the priority groups that found in warehouse management module, setup, mobile device, then warehouse app field priority. First time when you create a new legal entity, you can use the option of create default setup to create the default and the predefined groups. After that, you can use the options of move up or move down to move the fields across the groups. You can also add new group as per the business requirements. Be aware that only three priority groups will be shown on the task page. Now let's talk about the core configurations of the warehouse management mobile application, the mobile device menu and the menu items. The menu contains the menu items that will be used to complete the warehouse task. You can build the mobile application structure by adding a menu and menu items. So here, for example, there are some menus that all represent the inbound and outbound operations, the inventory, production, and so on. Then under each group, you can add and define the relative menu items that will be used by the warehouse workers. When you define the menus, you can assign the access level of the warehouse workers to a specific menu. Then we have the mobile device menu items that are used by the warehouse workers to complete the daily work. There are several menu items that are available out of the box, either to perform an inquiry, like to check the item on hand, or to create a work, like the purchase order receiving process, or to process an existing work, like to complete the sales picking process. Now let's review how to manage and configure the menu items that found in warehouse management module, setup, mobile device, then mobile device menu items. In order to create a new menu item, click new. Then here in the mode, you should select if this will be a work to process or create a work or indirect to perform an action or an inquiry. Let's first create some indirect menu items. So I'll select here indirect. Then here in the general tab, activity code, you should select one of the available activity codes. Let's create a menu item to perform an action like to change the warehouse. So I'll select here change warehouse. Then I'll give it the menu item name and title. Then let's create another menu item to perform an inquiry like to check the uh, on hand in a specific location. So I'll select here in direct, then here in the activity mode, I'll select location inquiry, then save. Now let's create some menu items that will be used to process the works. So I'll click new, then here in the mode, I'll select work. When it comes to select a work mode, then you should think if this action will create a new work or will process or complete an existing work. So for example, for something like the purchase order receiving process, the purchase order work will be generated while the user is receiving the purchase order from the mobile application. But for something like the sales order picking process, the sales order picking work will be generated when the user is released the sales order to the warehouse. When it comes to create a new work, then you should select from the predefined or the available menu items in the work creation process. Let's review the available menu items for the purchase order receiving. So here, for example, we have two menu items that could be used to receive the purchase order using the line number as a reference. The first one that will be used to only receive the items and put it into the receiving area. And another one, purchase order line receiving and put away. This menu item will be used to receive the items and move it to the put away locations. There are another similar two menu items that will be used also to receive the items 
but using the item as a reference. So let's create uh, a menu item to receive the purchase order using the item number. So I'll select here purchase order item receiving, then I'll give it uh, this a name PO item receive. And then here in the title, this will be purchase order item receiving. We can see here that there are some options that could be used to manage the workflow. So for example, we can generate a license plate automatically while the purchase order receiving process by enabling this option, generate license plate. We can also allow the users to select between the different disposition codes by enabling the option of display disposition code. If the print labeling is part of the purchase order receiving process, then we can also enable this option, print label. We will review the rest of the options during the warehouse management process course in different flows. Right now, and in a typical flow of purchase order receiving process, a warehouse worker will receive the items in the receiving area using the menu item of PO item receive. This action will generate a new work for the purchase order receiving. Then the same worker or probably another worker should process the existing work of the purchase order receiving to move the items from the receiving area to the final put away locations. So in that case, the warehouse worker should process an existing work since the purchase order receiving work is already generated. Let's review how to create a menu item to process an existing work. So I'll click here new, then here in the mode, I'll select work. And then here I'll enable the option of use existing work. Here I'll give it a name like PO put away. And uh, in the title, this purchase order, purchase order put away. Then I'll click save. And now the question, what is the reference that will be used to process the existing work? And the answer, this could be the original work ID. Here in the directed by, you can determine whether the user should manually enter the work ID to process the work, or if the system should suggest a specific work to the user to process this work. So I'll select here user directed, so the user will manually enter the work ID. I'll also enable the option of generate license plate. Then here in the work classes, you can list the work class IDs that are applicable for this menu item. So this menu item for the purchase order put away process. So I'll only select here purchase order put away. Then I'll click save. So right now, this menu item is ready for use. Now let's create some menu items for the sales order process. So I'm going to create two menu items. One that will be used to pick the items from the picking locations and another one that will be used to load the items into the bay door locations. So I'll click here new, then I'll select here in the mode work. This definitely will be use existing work since the sales order picking work will be generated when the user will release the sales order to the warehouse. I'll call it here SO pick sales order picking and then I'll generate the license plate this will be user directed and then here in the work class I'll select here is o pick then I'll create another one for the so load sales order loading to trucks and then here in the mode I'll select work this also an existing work and then here in the directed by this will be user directed. I'll generate the license plate automatically. And in the work class, this will be applicable for the SO load. Then let's move to the mobile device menus to build the warehouse application structure. The mobile device menu found in warehouse management module, setup, mobile device, the mobile device menu. First, I'll create the main mobile device menus. So I'll click here new, then the first one will be the main menu. And I'll create another one for the inbound, inbound operations and another one for the outbound. Then another one for the other options, for example. Then after that, here in the main menu, I'll move the inbound 
and the outbound and the other menu under the main menu. Then here in the inbound, I'll move and assign the relative menu items. So here under the inbound, I'll select here the purchase order item receiving and the PO put away. Then under the outbound, I'll move the menu items of SO pick and SO load. And for the other menu item, I'll move the menu items of change warehouse and location inquiry. We are almost ready right now to review the menu items structure in the mobile application. But before that, let's first create the mobile application users. So I'll navigate here to the warehouse worker form that found in warehouse management module, setup worker. Then I'll click here new and in the worker, I'll select the worker. And then here under the users, I'll click new and then I'll give it a user ID like Mo Shuman. The username is Muhammad Shuman. Here you can select a default warehouse. So I'll select here warehouse 80. And here you can select the default menu item for this user. So I'll select here the main menu. After that, I'll click save and then I'll specify the password. So this will be one, one, and then I'll click set password. Still, you can assign also some other applicable warehouses for this user. So I'll click here warehouses and then I'll click new and I'll assign also warehouse 81 for this user. So this user can perform transactions on warehouse 80 and warehouse 81. Then now let's navigate to the mobile application and log in by this user. So here, the username, the password. Here we can see the menu items that I have access, like the inbound, outbound, other. If I click here in the inbound, then we can review and see here the menu items of purchase order receiving and purchase order put away. Now let's review the features and configurations of the new warehouse management application. These configurations are managed by the Feature Management Workspace, so you have to enable the required feature first. These features were released exclusively for the new warehouse management application to enhance the user experience. We can see that only the first feature, user settings, icons, and step titles for the new warehouse app is mandatory and enabled by default since application release 10.0.25. So if you are still running an application before that version and you would like to use the new warehouse app, then you must enable this feature. This feature is one of the prerequisite configurations to use the new warehouse management application. However, the remaining three features, step instructions, promoted fields, app details are optional, but really it's worth to review them. I already released detailed videos about the three features, so I'll briefly demonstrate them in the next slides. However, you may refer to the detailed videos for more information. The new warehouse management mobile application has a set of application-specific settings that help to tailor the user experience. Since the application can be used on devices of different screen sizes, such as tablets, mobile phones, or arm strap, so it can be useful to centrally manage these settings from dynamic supply chain management. When the feature of user settings, icons, and step titles for the new warehouse app is enabled, you can define the mobile device brands that could be used in the organization. Then you can specify the global settings of each brand in the mobile device user settings form. So these devices of the same brand or model will inherit these settings from dynamic supply chain management. Definitely these settings could be override on a user level if required. Now let's review how to manage and define the mobile device brands that found in warehouse management module, setup mobile device, then mobile device brands. The first time when a worker edits their setting on a given device, the mobile application will automatically determine the local brand name and the model ID, then will create a record here in the mobile device brands form. Therefore, most of the device brands in the organization will usually be automatically generated. Let's navigate to the mobile application and see how to edit the user settings. I'm going to log in by my user. Then here in the application, click settings to specify the user settings. So here you can specify whether to display and show the product photos or no. You can select here from the available themes. You can select here the best button positioning from the available options. 
whether to scan using the mobile camera or no, how the field filtering and sorting should work, the vibration level, the sound level, the text and button scale. Then here the server request timeout in minutes and the button style. You can select here from slider or buttons. Once you specify the user settings here, if you go back to the mobile device brands, you will see here a record is automatically generated with the device name and the device model ID of my laptop. Still, you should be able to define new brands manually. In order to define a new mobile device brand, then click new and specify here the mobile device brand like Honeywell. I'll use the same as the description. And then here in the mobile device models, list the models that are available in the organization like CK75. Click Save. If I'll navigate right now to the user settings form that found in warehouse management module, setup, mobile device, the mobile device user settings, you can see here that a record is automatically generated for my user. Here you can see in the general tab, these are the settings that I specified in the mobile application. Here in the mobile device user settings form, you can define the global settings of a specific brand name or a specific model. So for example, let's define the global settings of the Honeywell devices. So I'll click new, then here in the brand name, I'll select Honeywell, then in the device model, I'll select CK75, and I'll keep the user ID blank since this is a generic or a global settings. Then here in the general tab, you may select here the settings that should be applicable for the CK devices. So right now, the CK75 devices will inherit these settings. And now let's review the mobile device step features. The first feature is the warehouse app step instructions. Using this feature, you can create and display detailed and custom instructions for each step of each task flow that you are using in the warehouse management application. The first time when you enable this feature, you can generate default and predefined instructions for every step. However, this could be override as per the business terms that are used in the organization. The second feature is the warehouse app promoted fields. This feature works somehow like the app priority field in terms of highlighting the important fields to the users. Using this feature, you can specify the fields that should be displayed to the users for each step in every process, as well as you can highlight the important fields with different color to make the users focus to these values. The third feature is the warehouse management app details. Using this feature, you can add submenu items to a specific step in the warehouse flow so the workers can park or temporarily stop the current task to perform another task and then return back to the original task without losing any information. Like for example, to check the item on hand using a menu item of item inquiry while performing the sales picking. You could also benefit from this feature to copy or paste information across the menu items in the same flow. Now let's review these requirements that combine the three features into one demo. So it's necessary to display clear instructions to the users while scanning the license plate step in the sales picking process. This is to help the new hires to ramp up quickly and to complete the daily work in an efficient way. So it's required to display this message while scanning the license plate. It's significant to only display the following fields to the users to keep the focus only on the important fields. And it's required as well to highlight the description to field to ensure that the user is picking the correct items as it contains more information about the item characteristics and the items could be very similar to each other. It could happen that the item labels are missing or properly the barcode is not clear or even the item is not physically on the suggested picking location. So in that case, the user should be able to check the item on hand to figure out the license plate number or to change the picking location with another one that has on hand if required. Now let's review how to configure and process the scenario. First, I enable the required features, then I'll navigate to the mobile device steps that found in warehouse management module, setup mobile device, then mobile device steps. Here you will find all the steps that are related to all the warehouse flows. We are looking for the license plate step. So here 
I'll select this step, license plate ID, which is for scan license plate. Then here, I'll click add step configuration. And then I'll select here the targeted menu item, which is will be is OPIC. Then I'll click OK. Right now, I can edit the step title of the input step or the confirmation step. So the default message of the input step is a scan a license plate, and the default message for the confirmation step is confirm license plate. We can also edit or modify the detailed instruction message of the input step or the confirmation step. This should be done on the language level. So I'm going to override the input message for this step. So I'll click here. Then here in the input message, I'll paste my message. Then I'll click OK. So right now, this is the message that will be displayed to the user while scanning the license plate in the sales picking flow. Then let's move to the second tab, select promoted fields to promote and highlight the important fields. So I'll click here, select fields, then you should be able right now to select from the available fields and move it here to the selected fields. So I'm going to select here the item number, location, the product name, quantity and unit of measure, and the RF description to then I'll move it using this arrow. Right now, these are the fields that will be displayed to the user. We can highlight also up to two fields with a bold and a different color. So I'm going to highlight the RF description field and the quantity and unit of measure then we can also manage the sort using the up and down arrows so let's put the item in the first then the rf the product name then the rf description then the quantity and unit of measure and then the location after that let's move to the third tab to configure the app details so right now i'm going to add the extra sub menu items to the license plate step while the user processing the sales order picking. So I'll click add, and then here I'll select from the available menu items. So I'll select the item inquiry, and also I'll select the location inquiry. We can also specify the fields that should be copied and pasted across the menu items. Just imagine that the warehouse worker tries to scan the license plate barcode, but the barcode is not readable. In that case, the warehouse worker can use the location inquiry detour to inquire the license plate value. And while moving to the location inquiry menu item, we can also copy the picking location from the SOPIC menu item to the location inquiry menu item. And this is the same when you go back from the location inquiry menu item after you select a specific license plate, we can copy this license plate and then paste it into the SOPIC menu item. So in that case, the warehouse worker doesn't have to enter any value manually. Let's review how to configure the scenario. So I'll select here the location inquiry editor, then I'll click select fields to send, then I'll specify here the value that should be copy from the SOPIC, which is the location value. Then I'll paste here in the location inquiry, the location. Then here, these are the values that bring back from the location inquiry. I'm going to copy the license plate from the location inquiry menu item. Then I'll paste the license plate value into the SOPIC menu item. So I'll select here the license plate. Then I'll click OK. For the item inquiry menu item, we just need to copy the item number from the SOPIC menu item and then paste it into the item inquiry menu item. In that case, we don't have to bring back values from the item inquiry menu item as this just an inquiry. For the requirement to change the picking location, this should be performed in the location scanning step. Let's review how to configure this scenario. So I'll select here the item inquiry, select fields to send, and then I'll copy here the item number from the SOPIC, then I'll paste it into the item inquiry, then I'll keep this blank and I'll click OK. Now let's review this quick demo. So I just created the sales order line for this item, LCD cleaning cat, then I released the sales order to the warehouse. Then let's review the generated picking work. So here we have the speaking work. I'm going to copy the work ID. Then I'll navigate to the mobile application and I'm going to log in by my user. Then 
I'll open here the sales order picking menu item. Then this is the step of a scan the work ID or the license plate. And here we can see the detailed instructions of this step. I'll, I'll paste here the work ID. Then we'll be moving to the next step to scan the license plate. Here, this is the step title of a scan a license plate. And this is the detailed instructions that we just configured. We can also see here the promoted fields and the highlighted fields. Here we can see this is the item number, the item description, the RF description too, the quantity and unit of measure, and the picking location. And here we can see that the RF item description too and the quantity and unit of measure are shown in bold and with different color. Now let's review the app details that we configured. Here we have the item inquiry. Let's try it first. So I'll click here, item inquiry. Then you will notice that the item number is automatically pasted here. I'll click OK, and then we can review here the locations that have the on hand of this item. Let's go back. Nothing is pasted here as, as per the configuration. Then let's review the location inquiry. So here in the location inquiry, the location is automatically copied from the SO pick menu item to the location inquiry menu item. I'll click OK. Here we can see the license plate that has on hand. So I'll select this license plate. Then you will notice that the license plate is automatically pasted here in the SO pick menu item. I'll click OK. And then I'll confirm the target license plate. And now I'll move it to the pot location, which is the staging location and the work is completed. Now let's recap what we discussed in the session. So first, we reviewed the different releases of the warehouse management application, then how to install and connect to the application, then how to specify the preferred input mode of each field using the app field names, how to promote and highlight the important fields using the app priority groups and the promoted feature. Then, how to build the mobile application structure using the mobile device menu and menu items. How to define and manage the warehouse workers. How to define and manage the mobile device brands and the user settings. Then, how to define and create detailed step instruction for a specific step in the warehouse flow. And finally, how to define and manage the application details. Thank you for watching and your time. Stay tuned for the next lesson. Feel free to reach out if I can help. Take care and good luck.